Welcome to another captivating journey with We Are Saintly Saint of the Day series. In this video, we explore the enchanting world of Catholic pilgrimage and our destination is no ordinary place, it's the sacred realm associated with Saint Januarius. Get ready to embark on a soulful expedition where history, faith, and the miraculous converge. Whether you're a devoted pilgrim or someone curious about the spiritual tapestry of Catholicism, this video promises to be a beacon of inspiration. Let's get started. How can I make a Catholic pilgrimage to see St. Januarius? One of the highlights of your pilgrimage to Naples will be witnessing the miracle of St. Januarius liquefying blood up close at the Cathedral of San Gennaro. This spectacular event has occurred multiple times annually for centuries, stunning onlookers and reaffirming the city's deep devotion to their patron saint. The history behind this phenomenon is quite intriguing. St. Januarius, Bishop of Benevento, was martyred in 305 AD under the Christian persecution of Emperor Diocletian, a pious woman named and Eusebia gathered some of his blood shortly after his beheading, storing it in two glass vials. Miraculously, the dried, coagulated blood periodically turns back into liquid form. The timing of the liquefaction is unpredictable, sometimes occurring on St. Januarius' feast day of September 19th, and sometimes before or after. Scientists have analyzed the vials but cannot fully explain the liquefaction. But for the people of Naples, this miracle renews their spirituality and closeness to their beloved San Gennaro. The sacred relic of St. Januarius' liquefying blood is honored extensively in Naples and beyond. The Cathedral of San Gennaro houses the vials containing his dried blood, displaying them prominently near the altar so devotees can pray before them. During the exciting liquefaction events, the cathedral comes alive with fervent hymns, processions and celebration in St. Januarius' name. Beyond the cathedral, Naples streets are filled with tributes to this patron saint. Vibrant local festivals like La Festa di San Gennaro pay tribute with parades, music and treasured culinary delights. His image appears everywhere from street shrines and souvenirs to the logo for the city's beloved Napoli soccer team. The people of Naples also turn to their saint's relic for intervention and protection. Most famously, after the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 1631 threatened to destroy the city, the Archbishop of Naples led a prayer procession with the relic. Miraculously, the lava flow stopped just short of the city walls. Saint Januarius continues to be called upon when crisis strikes this volcanic region. It's clear this holy relic is woven into Neapolitan culture and identity. By honoring the liquefying blood of their martyred saint, locals reinforce their faith and connection to the divine. After that profound experience of witnessing the miraculous liquefaction of St. Januarius' blood in Naples, the rest of one's pilgrimage through Italy, and the Vatican offers even more beautiful glimpses into Italy's Catholic heritage. In Rome, a visitor can indulge in the artistic wonders of the Vatican museums before entering the breathtaking Sistine Chapel. Seeing Michelangelo's stunning frescoes is a true highlight. And St. Peter's Basilica never fails to inspire awe, with treasures like Michelangelo's Pieta and opulent papal tombs. One could easily spend days soaking in the abundant culture of the Vatican. Beyond Rome, charming Tuscan hill towns beckon with their gorgeous churches and abbeys. And no Catholic pilgrimage through Italy would be complete without a stop in Assisi to take in St. Francis' serene basilica, honoring the patron saint of Italy. Taking in the natural beauty and scenery surrounding places like Lake Como and the Italian Riviera also gives one a sense of the diverse beauty of this Catholic-inspired country. The pleasures of food and wine should not be overlooked either on an Italian pilgrimage. Treating one's taste buds to pizza in Naples, classic pasta carbonara and tiramisu in Rome, and sipping Italian vintages elevates the enjoyment of the journey to new levels. Any visitor is sure to return home with a full spirit, a fuller stomach, and a deepened connection to the Catholic faith. Italy truly contains so much sacred beauty still waiting to be uncovered by those on a pilgrimage. Walking in the footsteps of saints and embracing centuries of Catholic history and culture is an unforgettable, inspiring experience. It's sure to motivate any pilgrim to continue seeking out new journeys of spiritual growth and discovery. What other Catholic things are there to see in Rome. As the heart of the Catholic faith, Rome overflows with sacred sites and art to enrich a pilgrimage. After the unmatched treasures of the Vatican, visitors can still uncover endless inspiring experiences elsewhere in the Eternal City. One could spend hours in reverence at the Pantheon, the remarkably preserved ancient Roman temple, now a Catholic church, with its soaring dome and array of Renaissance tombs. The Baroque grandeur of St. Peter in Chains Cathedral, housing Michelangelo's bride,
breathtaking statue of Moses demonstrate further artistic wonders, and the haunting ruins of the ancient forum provide a glimpse into ancient Rome's religious diversity. Wandering the city leads to smaller delights too. The elaborate neo-baroque facade of the Santa Maria Magyar Basilica, or quiet cloisters filled with the sounds of Gregorian chant. The city blooms with stone pine trees and elaborate fountains, enriching the beauty. When the Pope himself appears for his weekly address in St. Peter's Square, the excitement and devotion of the gathered faithful is palpable. With its abundance of ornate churches, towering sculptures, and holy relics from millennia of Catholic history, Rome presents endless inspiration. One could visit again and again and constantly uncover new spiritual treasures across this capital of the Papal States. Even after the glories of the Vatican, Rome continues to dazzle and remind pilgrims just why it is the holy center of their faith. The Vatican truly spoils pilgrims with sacred treasures to relish. The Sistine Chapel presents Michelangelo's breathtaking ceiling frescoes, while the Raphael rooms showcase the majestic school of Athens and other Renaissance masterpieces. Descending to the Vatican grottoes, one can kneel before the tombs of saints like John Paul II. The Vatican museums also dazzle with Egyptian obelisks, Etruscan artifacts, and the staircase that Christ walked, tantalizing visitors with the church's rich history. Outside the museums, St. Peter's Basilica os pilgrims with Bernina's towering bronze baldacchino and intricate papal altars. Seeing St. Peter's remains under the main altar is a goosebump-inducing experience, and nothing compares to climbing my Michelangelo's dome for panoramic views of St. Peter's Square and beyond. Even just people watching offer spiritual delight as nuns, priests, and laity from around the world stream through this Catholic nucleus. In Rome, saints come alive through visual treasures. St. Peter in Chains houses not only Michelangelo's Moses but also the chains that bound St. Peter in Jerusalem. At the Basilica di Santa Maria degli Angeli, one can visualize St. Francis praying amid ruins of an ancient Roman bath, and Santa Maria Sopra Minerva boasts stunningly vivid art of the Virgin Mary while also housing the tomb of St. Catherine of Siena. Every street corner and chapel seems to contain another icon of a beloved saint or artistic wonder, allowing Rome's holy history to spring to life. For Catholic pilgrims seeking inspiration through beauty and legacy, the Eternal City and Vatican endlessly deliver, making travel arrangements to see St. Januarius. Once you decide to make a Catholic pilgrimage to honor St. Januarius along with praying the St. Januarius prayer, some advance planning will help your travels go smoothly. Book transportation and lodging early, as Naples is very crowded during St. Januarius celebrations. Schedule your visit in September during the Feast of San Gennaro which honors the Saint's feast day, or aim for December when the miracle of his blood liquefaction also occurs. If joining an organized pilgrimage group, they will handle many arrangements. If traveling solo, research masses and celebrate times at Naples Cathedral which houses St. Januarius relics. Consider attending vigils the day before when pilgrims pray all night long. Rent a room near the historic city center to access the cathedral easily. Pack comfortable walking shoes as you'll explore the city on foot. Prepare spiritually by reading about St. Januarius' life and praying novenas in his honor. By planning ahead, your pilgrimage to see St. Januarius will be more fruitful and meaningful. I've been all over the place. America, Scotland, Korea, Hong Kong, Macau, the Vatican, Switzerland, France, Milan, and all of Israel are among the countries I've visited. Very soon, I'll be in Turkey. I am well versed in all facets of travel. I've provided you with a few straightforward tools to aid with your preparation for your holiday. Check out the links in the description below for those helpful resources. Time to pack your bags. How can taking a Catholic pilgrimage to see St. Januarius help to make me a saint? The saints provide inspiring examples of living faithfully and attaining spiritual perfection. Praying for their aid and intercession can help deepen your own holiness. Specifically, devotion to St. Januarius can support your journey to become a saint. This beloved patron of Naples was a bishop and martyr who exemplified courage, devotion to God, and care for his people. Praying the St. Januarius prayer connects you to his virtuous life. Asking him to intercede for you turns your heart to love for God and others. St. Januarius' protection against natural disasters shows his care for people in need. Praying for his help teaches you to trust in God's grace amidst trials. The miraculous liquefaction of St. Januarius' blood represents the mystery of faith, a key Christian virtue. As you revere this saint through prayer, you open yourself to follow his model of sainthood. Let his life inspire you to embrace humility, sacrifice, courage, 
Christian faith. With St. Januarius as your guide, your own path towards sainthood will be blessed. Past pilgrims seeking St. Januarius' aid have felt spiritually renewed by his holy power. Know that he prays with you as you strive to grow in holiness. Learning about our holy saints, precious martyrs, and church history will deepen your faith so much. Prayer is also such an important aspect of growing in your faith. Meditating on the gospel for at least a few minutes a day can dramatically deepen your faith. Are you familiar with the gospel? I believe that you were brought to this video today for a reason. Let's take a moment to think about the gospel and what the religion of Christianity is all about. The Bible tells us that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and that we all need a savior because of this. Romans 3.23 Because of this, God sent his one and only son to us to be the atonement for our sins. As it says in John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You see, in Malachi 3-6 God says, I am the Lord, and I do not change. He has always required a blood sacrifice for the atonement of sins. He says this in Leviticus 17:11, For the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. He also repeats this in the New Testament when he says in Hebrews 9:22, Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. This is why Jesus, God in the flesh, had to come into the world and live under the law, which are the Ten Commandments, to redeem those who were under the law. Have you obeyed the entire law of the Lord? Have you ever stolen anything? Even if it was small, have you ever lied? Have you ever not kept Sunday as a day of rest and worship of the Lord? Have you ever looked with lust at another person that you were not married to or done physical things with a person you were not married to?